It's one of Business Aviation's most acclaimed charities. How you can help can during this holiday season and beyond. From the National Business Aviation Association, this is Flight Plan. I'm Rob Finfrock with your trusted source for business aviation news. Most of you listening today, I'm sure, have heard about the Corporate Angel Network, or CAN. It's a charitable organization that arranges transport for cancer patients in need of specialized treatment to the hospital or care center, and they do it all by matching these patients to empty seats on board business aircraft. Now, it's no surprise that, as with many other charities, the COVID-19 crisis threw a wrench in those plans earlier this year. And while business aviation flying is slowly returning to pre-pandemic levels, CAN still faces challenges to fulfilling its mission. Joining me to discuss the organization's plans for the holiday season and the coming year are CAN Executive Director Gina Russo and Samantha Losa, the organization's Senior Project Manager. Gina, please tell us a bit more about CAN's history and purpose. Absolutely. This is a very exciting time for Corporate Angel Network because we're beginning our 40th year of service. We were founded in 1981 by three individuals affected by cancer, either survivors themselves or individuals who had loved ones who had been diagnosed with cancer. And they worked collaboratively to connect with companies that flew professionally and leverage empty seats that were available to help cancer patients get to care. It is really a testament to their commitment and professionalism and fabulous network that Corporate Angel Network is going strong today. To date, we've flown over 63,000 patients, actually approaching 64,000 patients in the near future. And we've changed many lives as a result. We're really proud that people with rare cancers who live in rural communities where there is not treatment for those diseases use our service to fly to some of the top treatment centers throughout the country. We fly people as often as they need to fly. Some folks need to fly just once. They need to get a second opinion at a comprehensive cancer center. And once a treatment plan is set, they're able to receive their therapy close to home. Other individuals need certain procedures or treatments or therapies that are only available far from home and they need to fly on a regular basis and many times. We will fly people as many times as they need to fly. We're extremely proud of our model because not only do we help the patient, but we allow a caregiver to travel with that patient. So many access programs in the community really focus on just the patient's barrier, but we realize that a caregiver is essential in helping us in our time of needs. Having your spouse, your parent, your your loved one next to you, hearing the information in real time and supporting you through that process is very important. So our model allows for an adult to bring a caregiver with them and for a pediatric patient to bring two adult caregivers. And uh, this has worked very well. Our corporations are in support of flying both the patients as well as the caregivers. And it's been the model we've used since our inception in 1981. Now, how did the pandemic impact that mission this year? COVID-19 absolutely brought our traditional model to a halt back in March. Our traditional model is to really work with business aviation groups and leverage seats on their already scheduled flights. And many of those flights weren't happening. There was no schedule to work with. Five of our companies fly regularly scheduled routes, what we in-house call them shuttles, where they fly to and from one location on a regular basis, and they earmark a certain amount of seats for Corporate Angel Network patients. And those routes and those companies stop flying mid-March, and some have not resumed. So many of the core companies that have been the backbone of helping our patients get to and from care suddenly were no longer in the air. We took a big breath. We paused for a few weeks, like, like everyone did, to really get a lay of the land and understand what the new model needed to be for us to safely fly cancer patients and not put them at risk or anybody who's a part of our corporate network, we worked closely with our 500 member companies to make sure that we were able to comply with their protocols, whether that was temperature checks, patients wearing masks while on board, social distancing while in flight. 
we have really been nimble. So we've we've adjusted to each company's protocol and then we've put certain guidelines in place that Corporate Angel Network uses for every patient and every caregiver, every traveler, I should say, regardless of what the corporation is requiring. So to answer your question, yeah, we stopped. We stopped like everybody else stopped. And we we took a really long look at what was going on. I think none of us expected for it to last as long as it has. But we're really proud that we have adjusted our model. Now it's less about using the scheduled flights, but more having our companies reach out to us and ask our needs and our patient needs and and conducting designated flights to help us get patients to care. So, Samantha, how have CAN's partner companies and operators adapted their support for your efforts during this situation? As Gina mentioned, when COVID hit the United States, it significantly decrease all of our partners' flight activity. But fortunately, our partners who support us have continued to support us during this difficult time. And they reached out to us knowing that our cancer didn't stop and that we still had patients in critical need who needed to get to care. And that's when we adjusted our model to figure out how we could continue to work with them, even though they didn't have their regularly scheduled flights. And we've tapped into not only dedicated flights, but also routine maintenance flights and pilot recurrency flights and any other routine flights that an operation may be performing. So I think looking ahead to the future, as things hopefully get back to the normal that we all remember with flight activity, perhaps we've tapped into a new model because maintenance and routine flights have always happened. And maybe this is something that we can use going forward. So a little bit of a silver lining when we look to future partnerships. And I also want to note that while our partners reached out to us right away, we also had new corporations who had never flown for Corporate Angel Network reach out to us. And that has been really humbling to see the support of the aviation industry, not only those who have aircraft, but those who don't and looking for ways to support Corporate Angel Network and its mission. So Gina, how do things look for 2021? I am very optimistic that 2021 is going to be a wonderful year for all of us. We've been through a very challenging time. I am so impressed by the partnership and collaboration and just general caring for each other that the business aviation community has extended during this bleak few months. I am optimistic that in 2021, some of our regularly scheduled routes, some of our providers who have those shuttles We'll be flying again. We'll be coming back into the New York City area, which is where we have some of our leading cancer centers. We'll be flying back into the Houston area, where we also have some cutting edge science happening for our cancer patients, both for children as well as adults, as well as Ohio. There's amazing treatment that's happening in Ohio and the Cincinnati area. And we have some partners who fly in and out of Cincinnati on a regular basis. So just looking even to those three hubs that are important for both business aviation as well as the cancer community, I'm confident that our partners will reactivate those regularly scheduled routes We are seeing some of our our friends in the flight departments, our schedulers who were initially possibly furloughed or their hours were reduced. They're coming back to full-time status, and we're just thrilled to have regularly scheduled hours with them where we can chat with them and strategize on the best way to work together to find seats for our patients. And again, keep that flexibility and adapt to each other's model. The models have changed in the flight departments, and the models have changed for CAN. So I think the combination of seeing staffing increase, flights are starting to increase, and patients are less fearful. You know, initially when COVID-19 became a huge crisis in the U.S., even if a patient needed to fly, they were too afraid to. And if that meant not getting the care they needed, it was a constant analysis of risk-benefit And many individuals would not fly even if treatment was far, far away and it was the only option for them. I think our our patients have adjusted to this new reality. They realize that the companies will take good care of them and are using safety protocols. CAN will take good care of them. And we're doing everything in our power to keep everybody well and, and still transport them to where they need to be. So the confidence across the board from the patient community and the business aviation community, I think, is increasing. And this coupled with hopefully a vaccine being available in the near future, I, I'm truly optimistic 2021 will be a strong year. 
We'll have more in just a moment. But first, this word from NBAA. NBAA Flight Plan listeners, if you value the expertise you get from your weekly podcast, we've got a way for you to get answers from experts live. Our NBAA NewsHour webinars give you access to the best operational, legal, technical, and other guidance for business aviation. Participate today by visiting nbaa.org slash newshour. We're back now with Corporate Angel Network's Samantha Losa and Gina Russo, and our discussion about ways you can help CAN during the holiday season and beyond. Samantha, what does a business or flight department need to do in order to connect with Corporate Angel Network and offer seats on their aircraft for cancer patients? We do require that all operators who fly for Corporate Angel Network utilize a pressurized cabin and two pilots. But other than that, we work with operations of all sizes. And so if someone thinks that they have empty seats to dedicate to a patient in need, then we encourage them to reach out to us to begin that conversation. And if someone isn't flying right now, but is interested in potentially working with CAN in the future, then I encourage you to reach out now to begin that conversation so that we can discuss how we can potentially partner together in the future. How might a company that doesn't have an aircraft help? There are a variety of ways that we work with partners who don't have aircraft and how they can support Corporate Angel Network. We always ask that you keep Corporate Angel Network's mission top of mind whenever you're speaking with industry colleagues and peers. Making that one connection to a new corporation for Corporate Angel Network could lead to a flight for a patient in need, and that's important to remember. There's also financial ways that you could support Corporate Angel Network while We are always looking for seats for patients. We also need funds to support patient resources. So if your company has a matching gift or rewards program that Corporate Angel Network could be a part of, that would be wonderful. If there are any events that your company is hosting, consider making Corporate Angel Network the beneficiary for that. And always just reach out to see if there's a way that your company could volunteer its resources to also help expand Corporate Angel Network's mission. Gina, another way CAN raises funds is through your annual reception and silent auction. That traditionally takes place during NBAA's own Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition, which of course didn't happen in person this year. But I understand that didn't stop the auction from moving forward. We are very fortunate that we were still able to have a Fund an Angel virtual auction this year. It was not the same as being together with our supporters and our friends at NBAA base. We love the energy of our cocktail reception and being in the same room with all the companies and supporters that make our mission possible. It's something I personally look forward to every year. I've been with Corporate Angel Network for five years now, and it's definitely the highlight of my year being able to be together. That said, I am so impressed by the sponsors who still rallied around Corporate Angel Network's mission this year, and we needed their financial support more than ever. And they were still proud to be platinum, gold, silver, and bronze sponsors, again, NBAA being our presenting sponsor. I am also impressed by the companies who rallied to provide unique items so that we could have an auction and get the bidding going and get people excited about the things that they could purchase in support of Corporate Angel Network's mission. We had a variety of different things, aviation items, as well as trips, as well as art, um, just a variety of really cool stuff, cool experiences, cool items. And um, just thrilled that we were able to raise over $250,000. That's fantastic. Samantha, how can somebody who's interested in perhaps helping out with next year's auction get that set up? They can reach out to the office directly by calling the office or emailing info at corpangelnetwork.org and uh, let us know how they'd like to get involved. So whether it's a sponsorship, whether you have an item you'd like to donate or whether you'd like to volunteer your services, we'd love to hear from you. I think that this year, because we had to rely on doing everything virtually, we saw a lot of creativity from our side, as well as our sponsor and donor sides in promoting our message and the event. And we saw everything from sponsors doing email blasts to social media posts to help expand not only their support of our event, but also just to help spread awareness so that anyone uh, who was able to donate or participate knew about the auction and was able to do so. How can individuals help out, perhaps at a more grassroots level? 
I think that always telling a friend, telling a neighbor, telling a colleague about Corporate Angel Network's mission is important and potentially the best way to support Corporate Angel Network. We don't ever want anyone to need our services, but should someone you know need them, then we definitely want them to know about us. And so I think just making sure that everyone is aware of our mission, then that's the best way to support Corporate Angel Network. Gina? I second Samantha's thoughts. And there is no such thing as too small of a donation. We are so grateful for any financial support that comes our way. We are 501c3. We are in a position where any dollar that's donated to us can be tax deductible. We're very proud of the ratio. We keep our overhead extremely low. We're in donated space, donated office space at HPN, Westchester Airport, here in New York. The majority of our registrations and corporate inquiries are handled by 30 volunteers that support Corporate Angel Network with their time and expertise. Of course, during COVID-19, we're being very careful about physically having folks in the office. So many of the volunteers are not coming in or supporting us remotely, but we're able to run this amazing operation that, again, has flown close to 64,000 patients with just five full-time staff members. So we're really proud of how conscious we are with our funds. And BAA has been a huge support to us over the years, and we're eternally grateful But it can be a huge entity, like a Fortune 100 company or an individual who has some extra dollars, maybe from not eating out since the crisis or possibly putting some funds aside for a special charity that means a lot to them. And we'd be honored to be the recipient or the beneficiary of those funds. Can someone offer their support by volunteering their time to assist CAN? Yes, we're always looking for volunteers, and we don't have just one volunteer role. We have various types of volunteer roles. Some volunteers exclusively work on the patient side and support patients with the registration process and understanding their diagnosis and where they need to travel to and from. Other volunteers are our advocates on the corporation side and help us with introductions to companies that might be able to fly for us or help us become the beneficiaries of events like golf outings or other team building events, or help us with corporate philanthropic departments that have matching gift programs, and they help us add Corporate Angel Network as one of the groups that can be selected. We are always looking to refine our website and make it user-friendly, so we're open to feedback. We have folks who read our website and give us some thoughts. We're growing our social media campaign as, as quickly as we can, again, with such a nimble team, and Samantha Losa has done an excellent job leading that initiative. But if there's anybody interested in volunteering in that capacity or has certain expertise, that would be wonderful. We have a very, very modest marketing budget, so opportunities to be on a podcast like today are, are priceless for us. So we're always looking for volunteers, too, to help us expand our our presence, our, our logo and brand recognition, and really make sure that anybody who needs our service knows we're available. We know that we might not be a household name and, and people don't think of Corporate Angel Network as quickly as they think of the American Cancer Society. But if someone needs to travel for a cancer diagnosis or for stem cell transplant, which is mostly for cancer, but it's up for some other diseases also, we're happy to help. And we're always looking for a pool of people to add to our army. I'll echo what Gina mentioned. We are a small team with a big mission. And so we're always looking for individuals who are able to help us expand our mission. So whether you have expertise in marketing, social media, fundraising, business relationship building, et cetera, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, We definitely welcome uh, all ideas and thoughts to help expand our mission. Whether you do one flight a year or 10 flights, those are patients that you are impacting directly. So that one flight is transporting a patient that we may not have otherwise been able to assist at that time. And that is life-changing. So just to remember that significant impact that you have by partnering with Corporate Angel Network is wonderful. And I think that it's important to remember that 
cancer patients need business aviation to travel safely at all times, let alone during a global pandemic. And I think that COVID-19 has given all of us a very small insight into what it's like to travel when you have an immune system that is compromised. And being able to travel on a business aviation aircraft helps to eliminate some of those barriers that uh, cancer patients face at all times, but especially now during this current pandemic. To learn more about Corporate Angel Network, including ways you can help out, visit corpangelnetwork.org. CAN is one of a number of philanthropic organizations using general aviation aircraft that receive fundraising support from NBAA. You can learn more about this endeavor at nbaa.org slash charities. And that's the latest from the National Business Aviation Association. Remember, you can subscribe to all Flight Plan episodes at Apple Podcasts in the App Store, wherever you find your favorite podcasts, including by asking Alexa or another connected device, or download them from nbaa.org. I'm Rob Finfrock. Thanks for listening, and join us next week for a new episode of Flight Plan. Flight Plan.